TBR. I did not film a single thing during Victober. I did so much pre-filming and it is lovely to be sitting back down with a camera and I'm really, I just love from October onwards all the way through December is a really lovely time to be on booktube. So I'm looking forward to filming and uh, I haven't done a wrap up in a while so I will have several wrap ups coming your way. I will prioritize making the Victober one first but then catch up. I think maybe I didn't even do a July wrap up so I have some catching up to do for you and uh, I am giving you my short list for nonfiction November. If you have been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know how excited I get about events and then just make these really unrealistic lists. And so my short list is already unrealistic, but I'll just show the ones that I picked for the prompts for Nonfiction no November, which is hosted by the lovely Olive over at A Book Olive. And uh, the prompts are totally optional, but I have some books I was already interested in that kind of worked for the prompts. And the first prompt is Collection. And I thought a collection of writings could be uh, a good fit for this prompt. And these are two that have been on my nonfiction November TBRs uh, pretty much ever since I started participating. And the first is Bring Me a Unicorn, Diary Diaries and Letters of Anne Morrow Lindbergh. Um, she was married to Charles Lindbergh. And there is, I think, maybe five total bind-ups of her diaries. And this is the first. And I would love to read this. These are from 1922 to 1928. And then Gathering Grassland, uh, Gathering from the Grassland, A Plains Journal by Linda M. Hasselstrom. She is a farmer and um, it's just her day to day, literally the day to day. Um, and then the other aspect of collection is Sixpence House, uh, Lost in a Town of Books by Paul Collins. This is a book about book collecting where he lived in this marvelous book town uh, called Hay on Wye. It is in Wales and there's always a book festival there. There are a ridiculous number of used bookstores and like antique bookstores um, in this little town and it is just a dream location. So he lived there I think it's a year and I love how this is made to look like an older book and I've just heard really wonderful things about this. It does look fairly short and like it could just be a lovely little gem. Yeah, it's 225 pages. Uh, so I would like to get to this one. Then for industry, I have two takes on that. And the first is from the Industrial Revolution, which is the Victorian era and the suspicions of Mr. Witcher. This is a Victorian true crime a shocking murder and the undoing of a great Victorian detective. It is grim. There is a child in a very well-to-do family that is murdered and Mr. Witcher was the detective um, who was on the case and really put his job on the line by saying who he thought did it regardless of their status in society. And it sounds really interesting but I also am a sensitive soul so I don't know if this will be too grim for me. There also is a um, TV mini series of this that looks really intriguing. Uh, so I might check that out whether or not I read this because I love a good mystery TV series. And then also for industry, I thought about a time when people had to be very industrious and that was the Great Depression. So I found this, I can't even remember how I found it, but Little Heathens, Hard Times and High Spirits on an Iowa Farm During the Great Depression by Mildred Armstrong Kalish. And so she lived on her grandparents' farm um, during the Great Depression. That kind of speaks for itself. Uh, I started the audiobook of this and it is phenomenal. Um, and just, I feel like the theme of my uh, nonfiction November is often resilience. I just find it incredibly inspiring. Um, and just makes me want to uh, just work really hard at making uh, life better for myself and the uh, you know my family that I live with in just all the little ways that you can. Uh, so I am loving this so far. I think maybe primarily I'll do audiobook, but if I get impatient, I can read a physical book more quickly than I can an audiobook. The next prompt is style. So I thought, why not read biographies of ladies whose writing styles I really like? The first is a more recent love and that is E. Nesbitt because I read the story of the treasure seekers and the would-be goods. And then I'm still in the middle of the prophet's mantle, but I adored particularly the treasure seekers and the would-be goods. Um, the prophet's mantle 
is an adult novel and I can't tell where it's going. So I can't tell you if I'm going to love it as much as the other ones. Uh, but it is The Life and Loves of E. Nesbitt, a Victorian iconoclast, children's author and creator of The Railway Children. And um, I just am very excited to learn more about her. I read the first chapter of this and I was absolutely riveted. I would love to know more about her. This is only like 330 pages. This is not a long biography and I don't really typically go for longer biographies, says the host of the Bronte's 900 page biography read along, um, which I'll also be reading this month, the last 300 pages. I'm excited for this. And she also, it was interesting, she knew a lot of other Victorian authors. She, she hovered between Victorian and Edwardian era as far as her writing career went. Um, she was in a socialist society that she was one of the founders of called the Fabian Society. She was in it with George Bernard Shaw for one. Uh, so looking forward to learning more about her. And then Agatha Christie, an autobiography. I have heard such good things about this. This is more lengthy, uh, but I am really excited for this. Uh, and there is apparently recordings. It says disc included. There are recordings of her voice, uh, but also you can look up on YouTube and her voice. I don't know what I was expecting, but I was not expecting that. So it's really neat. You can access recordings of them. And then the last one is treatment is how you treat land. And so I have wilding. Uh, the author is fitting. It's Isabella tree where she and her husband take this British farm and they try to return it to its natural state. And I've been meaning to read this for several years, ever since Natalie at Curious Reader talked about it and made it sound lovely. So those are the books I'm thinking of for nonfiction November, uh, aside from finishing up the Bronte's biography. And then I will, we're starting up again with the Mitford read alongs. And then also, uh, don't forget if you are a mystery lover that the first meeting for the um, Ian Rankin detective series will be happening on November the 17th. We'll be meeting on Zoom and we're going to be discussing a test of wills. Um, so I'm really looking forward to going through a detective series with other readers. We'll be reading one a month and it will just be really fun. Thank you as always for watching. Let me know what you're hoping to read for Nonfiction November and I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.